And that's something, if you're not a Prison Planet TV subscriber, you need to get a subscription. Support the organization as well as get the subscription that you can hand out to 10 other people at the same time. They can watch the broadcast. We try to make it as widely available as possible. We're just trying to help pay for the broadcast here as well as the bandwidth of putting it out there. And last night we had Police Chief Harger as well as Sheriff Mack. We interviewed them, talked about this amazing situation where the police chief was placed on leave and his police force was disbanded after he was singled out on his way to go to a Constitutional Sheriff's and Peace Officers Association meeting. He was singled out by the TSA. He was told he was a person of interest and he was also told by the sheriff that disbanded them that uh, he was, it was because of his political affiliations. Police Chief Harger, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Now, last night you had a meeting uh, to find out what the status, your status was going to be. Can you give us an update on what it is right now? Well, I'm, uh, as a result of last night's meeting, I was placed on probation. There was disciplinary action taken against me. I was not instructed as to um, why disciplinary action was taken against me. This is an open forum. Um, uh, they said there would be a 14-day probationary period with conditions, and they did not state what those conditions were, they being the town council. Wow. Uh, the, the people of our village were somewhat set back by that, and, and was very vocal about it. You know, what conditions are you talking about, and probation for what? And so that's kind of where we stand from a, an employment standpoint. But yes. as far as the issues that are, that are transpiring with TSA, I've had quite a bit of information come across my plate, and I'm looking into it, still trying to make heads or tails of this whole situation. Well, they say very closed-mouthed about everything. I, we've had situations with a fellow who had been just cleared by the TSA to uh, work on shipping areas, and he was traveling to Japan, stopped in Hawaii. It was a military flight. His, his wife was in the military. They took him off the plane in Hawaii, said he was on the no-fly list, and he was stranded in Hawaii for quite some wow. time, could never get any information about why he was put on the no-fly list. Eventually, through pressure inside the military, we believe, we don't know for sure because they're so closed mouthed and secretive about everything, he was allowed to fly again, but he still was never able to get any information from the government as to why he was put on the list or, or if he was still on the list. This is what's really concerning to everyone is that we now have these secret FISA courts that are meeting in secret, claiming that they are having these, and they're not even courts, they don't have anybody arguing the other side, there's no jury, there's just a single judge who basically rubber stamps whatever the government wants to do. These court decisions are secretive, we're never allowed to see them, the public isn't, and yet they maintain that they are modifying our constitution. It's a very dangerous thing when the government is turning to these kind of star chamber procedures, isn't it? It is, and, and the constitution is not subject to interpretation at the it's a document that is a living document, and no one can change it. Yes, I, we had a discussion, as I mentioned earlier. We went to San Antonio. We pointedly, Alex Jones and Anthony Gucciardi, pointedly asked the police chief if he would confiscate guns if told to do so. And he says, well, I'm not going to give you an answer. That's a hypothetical. <laughs> and Anthony said, your oath to the Constitution is not a hypothetical. And they train for these scenarios all the time. That was the very first thing, as a matter of fact, on this list that everybody signed at the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, the very first thing that was on the list was that uh, they, well, the first thing was registration of personal firearms under any circumstances, and then, of course, the number two thing was confiscation of firearms without probable cause and due process that, that you would not support that because, of course, registration always precedes confiscation. It's something we're very concerned about, and we've been talking about this quite some time, and, and I guess maybe for you, your initial response was to be cooperative, just like our response is typically to be cooperative, but you were surprised at how intrusive this was and how they kept at you, and, and eventually you pushed back on this, right? Well, absolutely. I mean, for example, I pull over a vehicle for a minor speeding offense. There, there are plenty of times that when I make contact with the driver, um, they're not pleased that I have them pulled over, but they're still compliant. They do what I ask. But they're not happy about the circumstances. And you know what? That's okay. This is America. There's nothing wrong with expressing yourself. Uh, if you have displeasure in a particular situation, you feel you've been wronged, there's due process. And that's all this was. I was being harassed, in my opinion, and I think the facts support that. Also, well, I, I, made, I made the point that you know, I didn't appreciate it. I wanted to be uh, allowed to travel freely, and I was not allowed to do that. 
uh, time and time again, I was stopped and, and harassed and annoyed and, and questioned like this is Nazi Germany. And, you know, papers, please, prove who you are. And, and what made this more egregious and, and injurious to me uh, is I'm a U.S. citizen. I, I, I'm obviously uh, not of, of foreign national descent, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, and a country accent. I mean, I'm from here. I was born and raised here. My grandfather uh, fought in Korea. My father fought in Vietnam. He was a military police officer. He served as a municipal police officer. And here I have served uh, on and off since 1998 in some law enforcement capacity or another, currently serving as chief of police. And they knew this, that I was serving as chief of police and treated me as though my name was Osama bin Laden. Yes. I didn't appreciate it. And there was, there was dramatic repercussions for, for vocalizing the fact that I didn't appreciate being treated that way. Well, if you'd been a member of the bin Laden family, they would have given you the VIP treatment, just like they gave the Muslim Brotherhood, just like they did give the bin Laden family right after September 11th. They're really coming after American citizens. That's the target. And it's constitutional sheriffs. It's American citizens who haven't done anything. They have declared us as the enemy in their internal documents. And I think that that is the thing that I find most interesting about this is the political affiliations. That's what the sheriff told you, that it was because of political affiliations. Whether it's because of political affiliations or whether it's because this TSA agent got annoyed that you stood on your rights, either way, we're looking at a very corrupt situation like that where a police department can be disbanded. Can you tell us what they did to your police department? Well, you know, let me clarify something real quickly. As far as the sheriff was concerned, he did not tell me specifically, directly, that this was because of my political affiliation. But based up upon statements that he made that were certainly of a political nature, uh, one could only derive that conclusion. But that having been said, uh, when I get back from uh, from my trip to the Constitutional Sheriff's and Peace Officers Association, I'm immediately told that I'm being placed on this administrative duty, administrative leave, whatever. I'm relieved of my, my chief's position, basically, uh, in, in essence. I'm, I'm stuck behind a desk. And I was ordered to take all equipment and uniforms, badges, et cetera, from all of my officers. And they claim it's only an inventory. When you tell an officer, turn in your badge and gun, as a law enforcement officer, it's not just what you do. It's who you are. You know, I, I want to make something abundantly clear. I, I am a public servant. Yes, I have the title of chief of police, but I'm a public servant. I am a servant. And my officers shared in that mythology. We're here to serve the people. And we treated our people with dignity and respect. But we didn't get that same dignity and respect from our own village government. Uh, no explanation to my officers as to what was going on, just turning your stuff. As a result, regardless of what decisions the village makes from here on out, they refuse to come back. And so we have no police department. Hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's very discouraging. It, it hurts my feelings. It's wrong on a lot of levels. People are backpedaling on some situations. You know, when you try to hold people's feet to the fire for their actions and hold them accountable, that's truly what we're talking about here is yes. transparency and accountability. If someone messed up, let's just, let's just admit to it. Hey, this was a mistake. This was handled inappropriately. What can we do better next time? And let's just move forward. But they're not doing that. Well, we're all very concerned because I tell you what I see here from our perspective, because we're covering this day after day after day. This is a very deliberate Countrywide experiment in behavior modification. My wife, when she was taking her master's degree, she had a book from B.F. Skinner. It was called Beyond Freedom and Dignity. And when I saw it, I said, well, it's about time somebody complained about the schools. <laughs> she said, no, no, you don't understand. I had not been introduced to the, to the work of B.F. Skinner before. Basically, he's a behaviorist. And when they do things like put their hands on you, and then if you are a good person and, and you do everything that they say, you let them touch you any way that they want, do anything to you that they want. They will reward you with letting you get into the Super Bowl or letting you travel on a plane. This is positive operant conditioning straight out of B.F. Skinner. They were training teachers to do this to their pupils. This is a massive experiment that we're all a part of. The Constitution is being pushed aside. The law is being pushed aside. We have a massive behavioral experiment going on here. And what we need to do is just tell them uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. I'm not going to be your dolphin anymore. We have <laughs> basic rights and we need to stand up for these rights. And I really appreciate you standing up for those rights. I really appreciate you standing up for our rights as a constitutional sheriff and going to this. You had some very moving words about that meeting that you went to. Did well, you, you know, want to share that with I, us? I had the pleasure, uh, the, the distinct pleasure of sitting in a room full of people, dignitaries, if you would, that don't view themselves as such, 
They view themselves as, as servants, and they were dedicating their time and resources and energy into constructing um, a resolution that would reaffirm the, the inevitable, the, 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 the pre-existing document, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights. And all they were doing is, is coming together in a, in, a, in a unified effort to say, we're, we're public servants. We have a flock to protect. We're going to protect our sheep. We're going to protect our people and our citizens, our fellow uh, Americans. And we're not going to allow the, the federal government, uh, any entity, foreign, domestic, to trample the rights of our people. People have the right to travel freely, the right to be left alone. And so when I looked into the eyes of each and every one of these people in this room, and I saw the sincerity. I believe the eyes are the window to the soul. And they're in there, you know, working away at this, and they're, they're, they're bouncing ideas off of one another. And, and, and one after the next, they're, they're sharing their, their, their thoughts on this. And ultimately, a document was reached. And it occurred to me at that point, this is a, this is a rerun. You know, almost um, in, in my mind's eye, I could almost see the old, uh, you know, uniforms that our forefathers were wearing at the time when yes. they were constructing the Constitution of the United States. Yes. Yes. That's very moving. You know, this is the only opportunity, I think, that we have to roll this back peacefully. We can look at what happened in East Germany. And again, I mentioned at the beginning of this hour how William Benny, who was the global technical head of the NSA, before he resigned because of the illegal activity, he said he didn't want to be an accessory to criminal acts. He knew that it was against the law to spy on Americans, to do this kind of blanket surveillance. He knew they were recording everything. And he resigned rather than be a part of that. And he drew parallels to East Germany. And, you know, it was in East Germany after decades of oppression from the police there shooting people who would try to climb over the fence to freedom. There was a, a pushback. People got together at a church, they had a peaceful march, and the police refused to enforce these criminal acts anymore. They stood down. They refused to be a part of that. And that's what needs to happen. Oath keepers, constitutional sheriffs, and peace officer association, police chiefs and, and sheriffs uh, like you, Chief Barger, Barger, th this is what we need to see happen. We need to see those who have the legitimate authority use it legitimately. We don't see our congressmen standing up and, and impeaching uh, Obama for his criminal actions or holding Eric Holder to the fire for his criminal actions. We need to see people in legitimate authority stand up and exercise that in legitimate authority. I concur wholeheartedly. You know, it, it's, it's, it's the only way I think that we're going to roll this back. Well, you mentioned that uh, one of the key things that people could do for you would be to pray for you, and you certainly do have our prayers. If people want to support you, they can go to the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officer Association. It's CSPOA.org. There's a legal defense that's being set up for you there. And uh, is there anything else that we can do for you? You know, I would say, again, just to re reiterate to each and every person that's listening, that uh, it's our individual responsibility to stand up and support and defend the Constitution as a citizen of the United States. It's our, it's our individual responsibility, and so I would encourage each and every listener to do exactly that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, keep us informed. We would like to know what happens if this police department is going to be put back together again. We'd like to know uh, exactly what they do to you since you're kind of on some kind of... Um, Animal House, double secret probation. They won't tell you what the charges are. They're acting exactly like the TSA with their no-fly lists. They, they know that they don't really have any reason to do this to you, so they're making all of the actions secretive and not giving any explanations. That's the real key. And I plan on flying out to the next CSPOA meeting, so we'll see if I'm on a no-fly list. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for standing on the Constitution. Police Chief Shane Harger. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny 
of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America, high quality products, and promote the ideals of liberty.